Jack and a young princess meet by chance. My father used to read that to me. I like a good adventure. I'm looking for an adventure of my own. But Jack's beanstalk accidentally opens up his world to giants. At last, mankind have returned. Our mission is to find and return the princess. Jack seeks to rescue the kidnapped princess and save his own world in Jack the Giant Slayer. Hi, I'm Salim. I'm Aaron. And I'm Sean. And today we're going to review the newest fairy tale adaptation from Hollywood, Jack the Giant Slayer. This one directed by Brian Singer. We've all just seen it. Mm -hmm. Who's going <laughs> to bury their magic beans first? I, I shall start. Now, there have been many fairy tale movies that come out in the past couple years. We have the Snow White movies. We have Alice in Wonderland. And the problem with those movies is there's not a lot of subject material to take from. There's a, it's a very short story, and they're trying to create it into a huge epic movie. And a lot of times, it, it falls short, especially in this film. It is true, this fairy tale resurgence has been happening a lot lately. But it's actually due to Bill Willingham, a, a comic book writer who wrote a series of comic books called Fables that started in 2002. He, of course, gets no credit for it, but he brought us these concepts like Once Upon a Time, like the new Snow Whites and the Hansel and Gretel, which Hunters, and now Jack the Giant Slayer. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's just not a good movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just a, a very weak script from Christopher McQuarrie, who has written things like Valkyrie and The Usual Suspects. And then we also have Darren Lemke and Dan Studney. And it's just flat. There's nothing mm -hmm. new and exciting about this picture. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's becoming a problem for Hollywood as far as I'm concerned. They just want to find any story they possibly can and adapt it into... The next Lord of the Rings, really. They want to make a fantasy epic and appeal to as many audience members as possible. I mean, this is a children's fairy tale, but they've made a movie that's not for children. It's PG-13. It's not for adults. It's not even that violent. It's supposed to be for the widest audience possible, but by doing so, they've made a movie that's really for no one at all. And we've seen many of these characters before in countless Disney movies and countless cartoons. We have the farm boy and the princess. We have the royal advisor who wants to take over the king. There's just so many things that we've seen before. Nothing is new. And I think what we really need to be able to dive into this, these films is something new, interesting, and exciting. Something a little bit dark. Yeah, like, character they, motivation would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. Plot would have been nice. I actually, I remember I was sitting with you and we, we said I could, we could almost feel the screenwriter trying to stretch things yeah. out as much as humanly possible to get to what they wanted to be the end. But there's little, there's no energy in the movie. The lines are not being delivered with any sort of gusto. No one seems to be having fun with what should be a fun picture. And, and that's in the story. It's also in the performances. You've got Nicholas Holt and Eleanor Tomlinson play the leads. They play Jack and Isabel, who Isabel's just basically added to the story, who's a female version of Jack, as far as I'm concerned. And she's obviously going to fall in love with Jack. Right. But their, their romance is just... Some flirtatious looks back and forth, so we know that they have feelings for each other. They're all good actors, but the script gives them nothing to do. It doesn't make them have, it doesn't give them charismatic personalities. Ewan McGregor plays a knight, and he's just not funny. It was terrible. Ewan McGregor came off The Impossible, which was a very good movie, and he had a very strong performance, and he comes into this film, and this is probably about the most useless character I can think of from his entire career. I there's there's no importance to him at all. He's yeah. just a knight. Yeah, and then we have Stanley Tucci, who we obviously know is a fantastic actor, mm -hmm. completely wasted. His character made no sense. I, I was perplexed. Why Stanley Tucci in this movie? His name was Roderick, and he was an advisor to the king whose plan somehow involved... Stealing the crown that had been hidden for thousands of years and taking control of the giants and ruling Earth. But it just, he could have done it, you know, months ago. I he knew know. where everything was. I don't understand why he needed Jack to be the one to plant the beans. It just... <sighs> yeah, when Stanley Tucci shows up and he's playing the villain, I thought, oh, this could be, this is fun. Stanley Tucci's a villain. I, I love that. Yeah. Nothing. Doesn't no. do anything. Well, th there's just nothing there for him. Nothing there. I'm talking to giants at the moment. So the director here is Brian Singer. Brian Singer has directed pictures like the first two X-Men pictures, The Usual Suspects, Superman Returns. So he's an experienced director. He's got a long resume in Hollywood. It's unfortunate that he just he doesn't bring anything to the table that's interesting or unique to this picture. It's the script. The script is it's, it's very weak, and there's not a lot for Brian Singer to really play with. Of course, that's not taking off any responsibility from Brian Singer. Right. He should have been able to make this into an, an entertaining film. Brian Singer could give us something. This world of the giants is a forest. 
A floating forest. A floating, a floating forest, forest with small with a, sheep. With a couple of stone heads. Even if the script doesn't say anything, you could make that world anything that you want to, especially yeah. with today's technology, and it's a forest. Yeah, it, he had a blank slate to really create something fascinating in the, in the vein of something like Lord of the Rings, but having his own stamp on it. And he, he failed in terms of that. Just that part of it. He's, he has creativity. You know he has it. It, it just didn't come out in, in this film. There's no mystery or awe or wonder to anything in the imagery here either. The, the characters will look at something and react to it as if nothing happened. A beanstalk sprouts from the ground and they just go, oh, there's a beanstalk. Well, we better climb the beanstalk. And that's not to say that the production values are bad. They are well made. The visual effects aren't terrible, but they just don't help the script at all. The script mm -hmm. is way too weak. If you're being annoyed by a group of kids and you don't have anything else to show them, show them Jack the Giant Slayer. They might enjoy it. Stream it. Jack the Giant Slayer, when they climb the beanstalk, the air is quite thin, so is the plot. Skip it. This movie is a colossal waste of time. There are much better movies out there right now. Skip it. Well, it looks like our votes add up to a half ticket, which is a skip it for Jack the Giant Slayer. Right. Cheers mm. to the fairy tale movies that are so great. Oh yeah, this movie's in 3D. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I forgot. Mm -hmm.